Hey, boys and girls, it is week six of the college football season. I am your Uncle Crappy. Um, that is the crappy part in, in more ways than one. That is the crappy part of the Carla and Crappy show. That's Carla <laughs> down there in Nashville. Hi, Hi Carla. Happy October. Hi. It, it, yeah, it, except it doesn't feel like October. It was 91 again today. It uh, like, it was it, it was over 80 degrees here today, and I'm, I am not happy. <sighs> I am not happy. Yeah, it's supposed to we're supposed supposed to finally cool down this weekend and get our first taste of fall. I'm hoping that that forecast actually holds because like I'm done with like walking across campus in 88 degree heat. Like it's S October, give me a hoodie. Starting starting on Saturday, we we're supposed to have a week of temperatures with highs in the 50s. Nice. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh, I cannot football wait. weather. Yeah, finally get some football weather. And we have some football to go with it. Um, this is this is when things become more interesting. And you have a by by this time, uh, we will talk a little bit about this um, in, in just a moment. But by this time, you have a better idea of who the teams are and uh, what a particular matchup is going to mean. And, and you know, it's not it's not November important. But uh, there's a lot of important stuff coming up in October. Um, you'll note by yeah. the, the one of us wearing the Ohio State shirt and the other wearing the Penn State shirt, and that is something that <laughs> it's coming up in a couple of weeks. First, <laughs> before we look ahead, um, as we always do, let's uh, take a look back at the, uh, the weekend that has uh, just wrapped up. Carla, um, what, uh, what stuck out to you from last Saturday? Oh, just some quick notes because I had a house full of people. Um, mm -hmm. We were celebrating it. Ellie's birthday. And so um, I was catching glimpses of games in between talking to friends and trying to keep toddlers from, from um, beating each other up. So um, it, it was fun. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, so I didn't get a good like overall sense of what was happening, but like mm -hmm. some real things like really kind of stood out. Um, first of all, I was frustrated as all heck at the first half of that Penn state game. Um, I wasn't paying close enough attention to really kind of know what was going on, but I was scoreboard watching, right? Like as I was prepping food and I would look up and say, how is this game tied at the half? Right. How is this game tied at the half? And you know, the, the, the Penn state fan in me, the person that's been a Penn state fan for my entire life is having that reminiscent feeling of the this is the this is the game that Penn State plays down to its competition because it mm -hmm. always does that at least once a season mm -hmm. and fortunately for for my nits um it was only the first half yeah. um and I you know one of my big concerns about this team has has been like I want to see more on defense the defense saved the team this week mm -hmm. um kept that game from you know potentially going being you know down at the half um defense played well and in fact um uh Aller even said something about that after the game like kudos to the defense for like playing out of their minds in the first half so that we could get our acts together on offense in the second yeah. half and put the game away mm -hmm. which is what happened um so fortunately that was you know crisis averted um but that was not a comfortable first half while that was going on we had it like we were just mentioned talking before we hit record um we had a quad box going because that mm -hmm. was going on and of course my husband the florida fan florida alum was watching was trying to keep a tab on the florida kentucky game and who boy oh um oh ouch yeah ouch. like that game wasn't even close no no like the score made it look a little bit more respectable by the end of the game but it really wasn't <laughs> um Kentucky dominated that game from start to finish, um, which I did not expect, but that's kind of the Florida that we've had the last several seasons mm -hmm. is a Florida that we can't predict which one we're going to get when they enter the field, um, particularly on the road. Yes. This has not been a good Florida team away from the swamp. Um, and whew, they just got absolutely dominated in that game. Um, so I just tried to avoid that conversation as much as possible as we were prepping for our party. Um, <laughs> it was a better <laughs> move. Um, LSU Ole Miss was absolutely insane. Yes. Yeah. Um, every time I looked up, somebody was scoring. Um, mm -hmm. And it was a two-point game back and forth for a lot of it. Like, it was just kind of this weird – it had absolutely no rhythm, a whole bunch of offense, a whole bunch of points. Hope you took the over. Um, and Ole Miss won that game. And that yeah. just kind of – 
wasn't predicting that either. Nope. Um, and then you have the, you know, the 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 two steadfasts that we would have thought would have played. You know, we knew Notre Dame was going to have a test. Mm-hmm. Didn't think it was going to come down to a final possession. Um, and Georgia needed late game heroics to, yes. to pull away Auburn. Yes, like. Those are two teams that I expected to win their games. I knew Notre Dame and, and Duke was going to be a, a, a battle, but I wasn't expecting it to come down to a final possession. Mm-hmm. Um, and I definitely wasn't expecting Auburn to be able to put Georgia on the ropes as long as they did. Um, so it was just kind of a weird day um, with with the outcomes and just kind of you know unexpected things. And mm-hmm. um, it, it, like we talked last week, like it's, and we'll get to this in a minute, the, the idea that this really feels like the most wide open yeah, of a top echelon of teams that we've had maybe arguably in the entire college football playoff era, mm-hmm. which is really interesting because the last year of the year that we have it, you know, the, the, the way that we know it now. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's a really weird season. Mm-hmm. Um, which means that we're going to end up with something really wacky at the end of the season. I don't know what that is yet, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun ride. Um, because like AJ says, you know, like when everything's up in the air, like some crazy crap's going to happen and we're going to yeah. end up with like Washington winning the national title. And um, at this point, I wouldn't put it past them. That could be. <laughs> right? That could be. So, so yeah, lots of it's, fun stuff. What did, what did Penn, you notice? Penn State, I, 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 I was pleased. Um, they had how they they overcame the slow start uh that was a mm-hmm. uh and 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 came back and won that in the fashion that they they probably that they should have from the start um so a really good second half um nice way to rebound and and that uh, that as as you said that isn't always something that um that that Penn State does when they when they they have they have that game um but they got past it this week, and I think that's uh, uh, you know once again that's the sign of a of a very good team um, that's that's coming up for Ohio State on the twenty first. Um, think back, let's think back to Lincoln Riley's days at Oklahoma. Do you remember those, Carla? I do. Those I do. those teams were among the scariest offenses that that college football fans have ever seen, and they never ever had a defense to match. Does this sound familiar? Exactly. Does this sound familiar? Very familiar. Mm. It does. Uh, his Trojans gave up 27 second half points to Colorado, enough that they were in danger of becoming the Buffs' latest upset victim. Um, I would have thought uh, that Coach Riley uh, would would have figured this out by now, but uh, but evidently no. Um, Coach, if your team could play just a little bit of defense, uh, they would absolutely be in the top four right now. Um, yeah. But in, in, instead, uh, you know, they got they got dropped in the rankings, and I think rightfully so. Um, the 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 offense is fantastic, but uh, that defense is going to get to put them in some predicaments uh, that they don't want to be in later in this season. Um, also, wave the flag once again. I'm holding up the Mac Pirate yes. flag. Um, one week after uh, after getting shellacked. Uh, at home by my Bobcats, uh, Bowling Green, Bowling Green Falcons went on the road and beat Georgia Tech 38-27 um, for yet another Mid-American Conference win over a Power 5 school, I guess, if you called Georgia Tech powerful. I, it counts. I mean, it's part of the, the thing, but still. Um, one thing we wanted to do before we go any further is uh we've got a nice team uh, point of demarcation here the start of a new month uh stuff gets more serious um hopefully the weather gets gets more football like um <laughs> i asked carla and i did this exercise myself to uh pick a top five um this is not like who's going to make the playoffs um we're not revising our picks from from the, the beginning of the season but this is like Right now, snapshot moment in time. What are what are the top five teams? Um, and as and that, as you, you referenced, we, we were talking about this before we started taping. Th- this was surprisingly difficult. Right? It was. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I think, like to me, there were only a clear two that I knew I immediately, without even looking, that I wanted to put in. Mm-hmm. And those and those two were the obvious: Penn mm-hmm. State. Mm-hmm and texas okay um 
those were the only two that I felt really strongly about that I'm like, I think they're playing at a level that has been consistent um, that I feel comfortable putting them in a top, like the top five teams in the country. Mm -hmm. Um, I put Ohio state in that list because I think they might arguably have the strongest win of the season Mm -hmm. so far with that win over Notre Dame, particularly with the way Notre Dame, if it's Notre Dame keeps playing. Yes. Um, I'm my, my, my variables were Georgia and Florida state. I, we've had some problems. We've talked about Florida state and how they just don't seem to, to be the team that we thought they were going to be. They keep right. winning, but it's right. not pretty. And I, I feel the same way about Georgia. Like, yeah, Georgia's unbeaten, but they struggled in the first half against South Carolina. Like they completely forgot how to play football mm-hmm. at home against South Carolina and then had to pull a win out of a, you know, out of a hat against an Auburn team. That's really not that good. Right. And I, are they the are they the number one team in the country? I think they're getting the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. Um, so no, I'm not sure I have them in my top five right now. I think a more Ooh. interesting argument um, is between Oregon and Washington. Okay. Um, I think Oregon more you know shut out for the most part Colorado. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's a really strong win. Has a couple of other really strong wins, and Washington hasn't had a big test yet. Um, but man, we're going to see one next week. We're going to have a fun time talking about that game. Yes. Um, because, because that's going to be a huge top 10 matchup next week. Um, but arguably those two teams out of the pack 12, they have good offense. They're playing well on defense. Um, I wouldn't want to play either. At least that's how I kind of thought about it. Like what team wouldn't I want to go play right now? Right. And I wouldn't want to go play either of those teams right now. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that they, they have a good combination right now at the moment um but again you know if we're looking ahead like pac-12 always eats it's young something's going to happen here um we just don't know which team's going to come out of this shuffle but i put oregon and washington an a leg above sc because of that defense that you were just mentioning mm-hmm. um i and and arguably oregon has the strongest win out of that bunch so right. um so i don't know like texas penn state ohio state i'm not sold on michigan they haven't played anybody um I'm not sold on Florida state or Georgia at the moment. Um, So I guess that's my top five, but I don't really feel good about it. Like, okay. (laughs) That's kind of where we are. That makes, that makes perfect sense. Um, That makes perfect sense. And I'm not, I, I, I always have to look through this, look at stuff like this um, and think of, you know, whether or not I'm, I'm my, my fan glasses are, are on versus, uh, someone who's trying to look at this objectively. Um, I, I think Texas is number one at this point. Um, they, I, 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 Ohio State has the second best win of the season. I think winning at Alabama and some of that, some of that, I don't know, you, you, you can argue that those are, that it's like uh, 1A and 1B. I'm not sure uh, if you're talking about the best yeah. wins of the season, but I, I think winning at Alabama, uh, really impressive. Um, I it, the the thing about where you put Georgia, um, and this is the thing that makes me crazy about polls, and 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 Ohio State benefits from this, and I, I will admit that freely. Um, you know, it, it's 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 hard to move up if you don't start up there. Um, and yeah. the and if you start up there, it's kind of hard to get moved out. Um, so Georgia, Georgia has not looked like a number one team, Georgia. I haven't seen anything that would suggest that Georgia is, uh, is anything at all. Like it was last year. Um, the, uh, the tight end Brock, what's his name is fantastic. Um, but that's, that is a team that does not have the offensive weapons that it had, uh, a year ago. So I, I, um, right now. I would have Penn State as number two, um, and, and then I just then I have kind of a mess. Um, I, I, I Ohio State is somewhere in the top five. Um, Georgia mm-hmm. probably in the top five. Um, I really like Washington. Uh, just yeah. I, and 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 I have them included over Oregon. That may not be correct. Um, Oregon's Oregon's just slacking of, of Colorado is a, was a, uh, a real eye opener. 
but um and 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 perhaps i'm i'm my you know have memories the flashbacks of michael Penix as 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 do you i'm sure um yeah. <laughs> but uh that that offense is just is just stunning and unlike unlike usc they they play a little bit of defense as well not uh they're not a yeah. lights out defense um it's not uh it's they're not a, a defense wins championships kind of thing if they win championships it's going to be because of the offense um i'm gonna say uh texas and penn state are clear number one number two um ohio state washington georgia in some order there um and and uh michigan um again they that is that's it's a pick that's uh, they, they are ranked where they are because of where they they were ranked last year, and right. so far they've been good against nobody. Um, right. They are they may be the the most mysterious team uh, of this group so far, um, just because I haven't. They they've uh, they're uh, they give they get points for consistency. Um, they've been winning the games they should. They don't particularly they they haven't had a bad start um so far but they haven't done anything that's really impressive either so i don't know maybe maybe pick oregon over michigan in that in that instance um but for right now uh i i was like oh well let's we'll do this and we'll we'll have we'll have a discussion about who's the the, the top five right now and I, I think as you experienced it, this is this is a harder chore than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost like splitting hairs at this yeah, point. Like I feel really good about Texas. I feel really good about Penn State. Mm -hmm. I feel pretty darn good about Ohio State. But then, yeah, after that, it's like there's about four or five teams that could mm -hmm. fill that last those last two spots, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure. I'm really and not sure. Don't know who um, they are. October will tell, it's boys be a fun and girls. Uh, it's going to be a fun playoff race, um, and and I mean, just uh, this month we're going to get uh, answers to some of these questions. Um, so that's yeah. a, that is a fun thing to look forward to. Uh, one last thing from last weekend: your big bear, big red bears report. Cornell unfortunately gave up three fourth quarter touchdowns. They got to do something about uh, about giving up scoring in the in the in the fourth quarter because that's been a not, not just this season, but that's been a, uh, a problem for them. Um, that was enough that uh, that uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, Big Red lost its home opener to Colgate on Saturday, dropping the Big Red Bears to two and one on the season. Still a good start. My nephew, Drew Powell, uh, starting running back uh, for Cornell, uh, got to start once again. Ended the game with twenty five yards rushing on four carries. Uh, added another twelve yards in passing receptions. I think on uh, three or four receptions. Um, I think that the stats don't show it's fun to watch him because he does not give up on plays. Uh, he is good. He's a good blocker, uh, both in pass protection um, and, and a couple really key blocks uh, when his quarterback is scrambling and he got downfield and um, and, uh, and sprung Jamison Wong for, for extra yardage. Uh, next up for Cornell. This is this is their uh, their there's it seems like there's been, there's an annual game um, uh, where they are on. Uh, national TV, and that weekend is this weekend coming up, nationally televised, Friday night game, ESP New at Undefeated Harvard. So um, uh, dial that up on Friday night, boys, boys and girls, and uh, cheer on number 23 uh, on the Big Red Bears offense, so you'll get to see him play. AJ. I'll do that. Um, AJ, I learned, I learned this week uh, that AJ makes excellent pizzas. I've been following that whole that whole story on social media, and I'm like, I'm kind of jealous of you all that like I'm not I don't live close enough for AJ to like make me a pizza. Um, so. he made me he made me two pizzas actually on uh what that was uh, that was Sunday evening, and they were Sunday, they were yeah they were fantastic. He uh he he found a used pizza oven, um and uh burns pellets, gets really hot, and he's figuring it out, and he's uh he's really got it. Uh, it's as we said, this is not his first radio. Um, it was his second rodeo, um, and he did an excellent <laughs> job. Um, he also has thoughts about college football, particularly uh, the Group of Five and uh, Pac-12 after dark games. 
Um, but he's got a uh, he's got a there's a lot of interesting stuff going on this weekend more than than, than yeah, you is. and I than you and I can get to. Um, but AJ is going to tell us about uh, tell us about a bunch of them. AJ, go. Hello, and welcome to this week's Group of Five After Dark Report. I'm recording this literally after dark. It is the morning. Uh, we're going to walk through the schedule here. I want to start on Friday with Nebraska to Illinois. Now, no, this is not what the game that you would normally think is would be part of the Group of Five After Dark Report, but both of these teams are like mid at best, at very best. So we actually potentially have a very good game. This is a fun thing that I do when I go through the schedule. I look for two bad teams because two bad teams playing each other, it's kind of like when you um, multiply a negative by a negative and you get a positive. Like, this could be a decent game because both of these teams are both bad. The magic of, of math and sports and whatnot. Uh, I want to slide over to Saturday at noon... We have William and Mary at Virginia. Y'all, it might be time to ask the, the, the tough questions in Charlottesville about whether uh, Tony Elliott is really, really ready for this job. This has an incredibly high potential to be an 0-6 Maryland team losing to William and Mary and potentially not even close. Uh, William and Mary is real, real good, and Virginia is not good at all. Uh, they did get their starting quarterback uh, back, but... Even when they did have him, it wasn't good either. So uh, keep an eye on that game. Uh, don't look now, but Toledo is 4-1. and one. Um, If you haven't watched Toledo, they are playing stupid fun football. They have a turnover tire, uh, which is great, by the way. Uh, it is literally a tire that they put around the player's neck like a necklace. And they just wear a tire around the sideline for a while when they get a turnover. It's great. And they're going to Massachusetts, a.k.a. Slammachusetts. They're going to Slamhurst uh, to play UMass. UMass got got some people in their feelings in week zero. And everybody was like, oh, here come the Minutemen. And then there went the Minutemen. That was it. They are they're one in five. Toledo's favored by 18 and a half. Uh, watch this just for the pure sake of watching Toledo. Don't watch UMass. Don't do that. Uh, I won't talk about it. Carlin Crappy will definitely talk about it, but uh, a happy Web Wibble Wibble Wee Week to all those who absorb. Uh, that should be actually a very, very fun game, and I'm looking deeply forward to that. I know it's not part of the brand, but go with it. Um, Marshall at NC State. NC State, what are you doing? Why are you, why are you, why are you inviting Marshall to town? Marshall is good. Like, good, good. Uh, I will say this. Marshall's run defense suspect uh they should have won the uh game last week against odu by a lot more but they gave up multiple 60 yard touchdowns it was all bangers for odu don't do that marshall uh you might want to shore that up before you play nc state but mm, mm, mm. nc state favored by six and a half at home there that's at uh 2 p.m on the cw a reminder that the acc is playing football games on the cw just sidebar, does the ACC hate NC State? They put them on every single Friday game. And this is NC State's second CW game. What is it that you guys don't like about NC State? Man, do better. Uh, at 3 p.m., we have Wazoo at UCLA. This is on the Pac-12 network. I highly encourage you to find a VPN, set it to Moldova, and go to the Pac-12 Inter Network International YouTube channel where you can watch these games live. That's a gift from me to you. Uh, UCLA is pretty good. Their only loss is to, a, uh, to Utah, who basically held them down and punched them in the chest over and over again. Uh, Wazoo got into a shootout banger with Oregon State, and uh, now they get to go play Dante Moore in the Rose Bowl. Uh, this should be pointsy as heck. I s highly suggest you go find a way to watch this game. That's at 3 p.m. Eastern. 3.30 p.m. on Peacock. It's Purdue at Iowa. Uh, this is just a reminder that Brian Ferentz, still not on pace, got it back last week by getting it over 26 against Michigan State. Purdue's got a good defense. 
So this might end poorly for him. Uh, also, yes, 26 is the total points. Uh, the Brian Ferentz schedule does include defensive and special teams points. Shout out to his agent for making that happen. Uh, I was favored by two and a half, but the over under is 39 and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I expect Iowa to win by like one and a half points somehow. There's like a half point rule that only Kirk Ferentz knows about, and that's how they'll win. Um, ooh, 3.30 p.m. on ESPNU. We have Texas State at ULL, Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns. Uh, ULL's favored by m- one, and the fun index is 68 and a half. Yes, please. G.J. Kenny went into Texas State and turned on the points machine. Apparently, it was in the back. They didn't know where it was. He found it and put it, cleaned it up. Made one of those really uh, great YouTube satisfying videos of him cleaning up the points machine. And now it does nothing but make touchdowns happen. They are so fun to watch. They will score 1 billion points. They might give up just shy of 1 billion points. But nevertheless, there they are. That game should be super duper fun. Uh, fresh off of beating the brakes off of Georgia Tech. We have Bowling Green in Miami of Ohio. Miami of Ohio, actually good. I regret to inform Crappy. Uh, that's on ESPN+. Plus. Uh, Miami's favored by 10. Just just keep an eye on this. Uh, let's, let's see if Bowling Green can put two together. I don't think they can. But coming off of a hot win, that might be uh, something to keep an eye on. Uh, I have to give some some love to uh, North Texas. North Texas is playing Navy. That's on CBS Sports Network, the Network of Champions. That is at 3.30 Eastern time. North Texas is one of my favorite teams because they are all gas, literally no breaks. They are like top 25 in points per game in both defense and offense. (laughs) And I don't mean the defense one in a good way. They are... Uh, bad as heck on defense. They give up so many points and they score so many points. And they're four and one, or no, sorry, they're two and two. I had them mixed up with Texas State. Uh, they are two and two. There's a reason for that. So uh, maybe put your eyeballs on that game. Speaking of games at, at, in that same time slot, on Fox at 4 p.m. We have UCF at Kansas. UCF. Oof. 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 Don't do that. <laughs> You were up 35 to 7 and lost 36 to 35. And almost won via the dumbest play I've ever seen in my life. If you haven't seen this, go online and look up UCF. Uh, their quarterback literally, it, it was fourth and five, basically, it was fourth and game. Their quarterback, just trying to make something happen, evades five Baylor defenders. Runs 30 yards behind the line of scrimmage to the point where he is standing in the end zone and throws a 46-yard pass to get the six yards needed <laughs> for, for, the, for, for the first down. It was the dumbest play I've ever seen, and it shouldn't have worked, but it did. Congratulations, Gus. You got one. Uh, you still lost the game, but you got one. Uh, they're three and two. Kansas is four and one. Their their lone loss now is to a, a very good Texas team, uh, who won convincingly. So that game should actually be fun. Over under on that is sixty five. Just just you know, pew, pew, pew. let's go. Uh, Six thirty p.m. If you're looking for points, look no further than the Pac-12 Network, where Colorado's playing Arizona State. Arizona State. It uh, ooh, it has not gone well for the uh, for the Sun Devils this year, largely because their very highly touted uh, incoming quarterback Jaden Rashada, he of almost went to UCF, but their NIL collective could not actually figure out where the money was going to come from to pay him. Um, he got hurt. Then they were down to their second string. Then he got hurt. Now they were down to their third string. I think the second string quarterback is back, uh, but they just have not been able to stay in games because of that uh they have a fantastic running back named cam scatabo who you should watch he is christian mccaffrey bowling ball looking running back uh he is a delight and at one point in i think it was the usc game they were just like throwing him at every position he was playing quarterback at one point like they were trying uh this is in tempe uh apparently it is cool enough in tempe that they can play that game at not midnight so uh congratulations uh this game should have a million points scored in it 
keep an eye on that one. That's on the Pac-12 Network. Again, find a VPN. We are going to slide all the way down to 8 p.m. And this is the game of the week. I don't care about any of the other games this week. I don't care about Kentucky, Alabama. I don't care about LSU, Missouri. The game of the week at 8 p.m. on Fox, we have Fresno going to Wyoming. Uh, and I'm, I'm not kidding about that. This is the game of the week. Fresno State cloned Jay Kaner. They named him Mikey Keene. And they are right back to where they were last year. Uh, they are scoring a ton of points. And they finally have a defense to match that. They are getting a ton of takeaways. They are mean on defense now. Uh, they beat Nevada 27-2 to last week. And I know that you're like, oh, that doesn't seem like a lot. Nevada's really, really bad. And you're right. But at no point did Nevada look like they were going to do anything in this game. It was like they knew they were playing Wyoming next week and they didn't need to keep the playbook open. Um, they are going to Laramie to play this game. Uh, weird things happen in Laramie this year. Uh, if, you're, if you go to Laramie, it's going to be a problem for you. Uh, and this is on national television. Craig Bull has them playing truly like we are going to run the ball down your throat. And if you don't like it, stop us try it and uh, ask Texas Tech how that went for them. This is going to be a stupid fun game. I'm so happy that they are putting this on national television. Uh, this is, in my, in my opinion, this is like a Mountain West championship preview. Uh, both of these teams are really, really good. There is nothing in my mind that is seeing either of these teams uh, preventing them from getting into the Mountain West championship game and doing this all over again. Well, hopefully in Fresno and we get like a back-to-back -back situation. So, we can go to the late slate. The late slate, not great this week. Uh, Hawaii is off, and good for them. They deserve a break. Uh, we have Oregon State at Cal uh, at 10 p.m. That is on also on the Pac-12 Network. It's big Pac-12 Network weekend, I guess. Um, the Beavs are very, very good. Uh, their one loss is to Washington State. Cal is staying in games. They have a pretty okay defense. Jaden Ott, if you haven't watched him play, is fantastic. He's going to be playing on Sundays. He is a great running back. I don't understand how they just continue to get these incredible running backs, but they do. Uh, so Jaden Ott for Cal, uh, you should watch him. They're staying in games. They're just not able to get over the hump and uh, actually make something happen here. So that's at 10 p.m. on the Pac-12 Network. And finally at 10.30 on ESPN, live from the Coliseum, we have Arizona at USC. USC is favored by three touchdowns, but the over-under is 71.5, and, and there's a reason for that. Uh, Alex Grinch's defenses are bad. That's why. They cannot tackle. Nothing has changed. If you watched the Pac-12 championship game last year or the Cotton Bowl where Tulane came back and won, if you've watched either of those games, you've seen a USC game this year. The offense is going to score at literal will. But they cannot tackle to save their lives, and they are not getting the turnovers that they were getting to start the season last year. It is... It, mm, Arizona has the potential for the Jaden Delora random number generator to come up big, and I'm just going to go ahead and put this game on upset watch. I'm just going to say it right now. You should watch this game. Caffeinate, stay up late. You're going to be all jazzed up from the Fresno-Wyoming game, so you might as well stay up and watch Arizona upset USC in the Coliseum. Write it down right now. That's been your Group of Five After Dark report. I'm about to go into a dark place. It's just the Squirrel Hole Tunnel. But it's time. We're getting into conference play. Games are on the Pac-12 network. You should find a VPN once again. Uh, this has been AJ. Back to you, Carla and Crappy. Thank you, Mr. Pizza Guy. Uh, we appreciate uh, your your segments as always. Uh, Carla, you and I have have a, a bunch of games, including one that I, I that AJ I, is, is, is stoked about. He 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 expressly told me, um, caffeinate Saturday night, Fresno State, and Wyoming. We'll get to that one. Yeah. Um, so I, I I know that's something he's uh, he's wound up about. Let's start, however. With the Wed River rivalry, uh, this of course this, Elmer Fudd Week. Yay. Elmer Fudd Week. Um, this of course is in the Cotton Bowl in Dallas, not not in in the Jerry Dome, but in that in that old building. Um, split 
to, to completely, totally, precisely in half by Texas and Oklahoma fans. Uh, this is at noon on ABC. Uh, Oklahoma is ranked 12th. Texas is ranked third. Texas is favored by six and a half points. The AJ Fun Index um, is a, did 60 points, respectable. Ah, uh, Carla, how's how's the Wed River rivalry going to go this this season? This season, well, uh, so I'm going to take what you just said about Michigan, right? Yes. With the like, this is the kind of the team that we don't really know anything about, mm -hmm. and I'm going to raise you Oklahoma. Um, this feels really weird to say. Mm -hmm. but it's week six and we still don't really know who the Sooners are or whether or not they're for real. Like they right. haven't really played anybody. Their toughest test so far is arguably Cincinnati, but this is a Cincinnati team that just got upset a couple of weeks ago by mm -hmm. Max Miami. Right. Mm -hmm. So we really don't know. And it's interesting because like, just as quietly as Michigan's just kind of floating out there at number two and nobody's really talking about them. Like Oklahoma's number 12 and nobody's really talking about them. Like they've just kind of flown underneath the national radar the entire season so far. Um, Texas, we've talked about them. They look like the yeah. real deal this year. So that means that this is a huge test for Texas because this would be a game that would normally trip the horns up. Yep. Um, it, it, this, this rivalry is intense. Um, the team that's not supposed to win often wins this game. Um, you know, Texas did this a couple years ago to Oklahoma, an Oklahoma team that had playoff aspirations, and this was a huge hurdle for them. Um, Texas needs to be really, really careful in this game. Mm -hmm. On paper, Texas is the better team. Um, Texas should win this game. I think it's going to be tight. I, I like the line on this game, but I think Texas is the, it's the more talented team this year and mm -hmm. they're the better tested team this year heading into this rivalry. But Hey, it wouldn't stun me one iota if we're st sitting here next week talking about the fact that Oklahoma just knocked off Texas. Like that would not stun me. Um, rivalry games. Again, like we say at the end of the season, rivalry games, throw the books out the window. You, right. you have uh, weird things happen in rivalry games especially this rivalry game yeah. texas should win but hang on to your seats this is the noon slate that we're starting here is bonkers you're uh -huh. going to need multiple screens the whole you know the whole bit for for this noon window but this game is going to be extremely entertaining watch this game um but i think texas pulls it out i will have this on the the second screen actually um because the the, the next game we're going to talk about uh in this instance both teams are five and zero, two and zero in conference um, I, I would, I would, as I pointed out, I think Texas has the best win uh, on the season so far. Um, Oklahoma has slightly better offensive numbers, while Texas leads the way in defensive statistics. Although the numbers are, are actually fairly close, um, they are. Yeah. Uh, Quinn Ewers is getting a ton of attention, given that he, uh, he led his team to that that victory at uh, in Tuscaloosa. Um, Dylan Gabriel is quietly putting together an even better season statistically. Um, and so mm -hmm. he's going to be ready to test the Longhorns defense. Um, I, when he was at Clemson, I got so damn tired of hearing about the defensive genius of Brent Venables and blah, 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 blah. Um, I am willing to admit that he got that, that reputation for a reason. Um, and here's a, here's a twist. I, maybe he's going to have some wrinkles ready for Texas, and maybe that'll give the Sooners a chance to squeak by the Longhorns um, in, in yet another uh, bizarre chapter of this rivalry. I'm going to pick Oklahoma to win this game. Nice. Big nude on Fox, of course, the criminally unranked Maryland Terrapins at number four Ohio State. Uh, the Bucks are favored by 20. The AJ Fun Index uh, is a 57 and a half points. Um, I will explain my introduction when I when it's my turn to talk about this game. Carla, please go ahead. <laughs> so, like, ever since Tua's younger brother, Talia Tagovailoa, took over at quarterback for the Terps, this, like, seems to be the recipe for Maryland. Mm -hmm. Maryland gets off to an unbeaten start, causes people to ask the question, is Maryland for real this year? Creates hype around one really big game, and then gets crushed, falling back to earth for the rest of the season. Like... It happened a couple of years ago against Penn State. I don't know yes. if you remember that. That I like that the University Park got all hyped. They canceled classes for the day. And then Penn State, which was a good team, but not the team that, 
you know, that the, the Knits have this year went down, just absolutely steamrolled them mm-hmm. um, in that game. And then we never heard from Maryland the rest of the season. Right. And like, here we are again, right? <laughs> like this is the same, this is the same setup here. And so why I feel good, I'll let you do more of the analysis on, on, on your Buckeyes here, but why I feel good about picking Ohio state to win pretty comfortably in this mm-hmm. game, despite Maryland's Maryland's convincing wins over Indiana and Michigan state, which is nothing really to scoff at. Those aren't great yeah. teams in the big 10, but that's at least legitimate competition, right? Um, the Terps defense in the secondary isn't as tough as, as it's really going to need to be in a matchup like this, when you're going up against that Ohio state offense, that's the weakness here. And I think how Ohio state can exploit that. Also the game's in the shoe. If this game was yeah. at university park, then okay, maybe we'd have a little bit of a conversation here, but it's at noon in the shoe. Um, Ohio state's going to win this game. Um, it might not be a, a huge margin of victory here, but I think it's two scores. It might be 10 points. Um, but I, I think it's going to feel pretty comfortable, even if the score word doesn't necessarily show it. But yeah, I, I like the Bucks here. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I I understand the history. Um, and and uh, again, this is this kind of goes back to what how, how we rank teams based on stuff that's happened in the past. That is why Maryland is not ranked at this point, even though they are undefeated and there's a two loss LSU team um, that's still in the top 25. Um, yeah. Maryland should be ranked here. Um, I, you know, and maybe it's, maybe it's only 23rd, 22nd, something like that. Um, but they should be. Here's another reason you mentioned Talia. Talia is a, uh, uh, has a good start to the season 1400 passing yards 13 touchdowns um that's that's not among the leaders but uh in the country uh but it is a solid performance and it's it's given maryland uh you know the the the, uh uh the backbone of an undefeated start to the season uh we talked last week about how well ohio state did defending notre dame's passing game the bucks will have to do that again on saturday uh and i and i look at this game because i uh, it, it, it it shouldn't be close. It should not be. Um, but in my mind, Maryland is the team that has replaced Indiana as the most annoying opponent in the conference. Um, and that's because and the, these games are in College Park. Um, but uh, there was an overtime game with Ohio State a few years ago. There have been other games where, uh, well, just last year, Maryland came back and scored a couple of times in the, in, the, uh, in the second half and made that game a little more uncomfortable than it should have been. Um, if Ohio State starts slow, this could be tight for a while. Um, either way, either way, uh, Ohio State uh, wins and and Jen could actually cover uh, in in their uh, uh, their uh, Big Ten first Big Ten game at home. Uh, also at noon, if you're if if those two games aren't good enough for you. Uh, on ESPN, yeah. number 23, uh, LSU at number 21, Missouri. LSU just is favored by six and a half points. The uh, AJ Fun Index is a definitely fun 64 and a half. What do you think? Tigers on Tigers. Here we go. Here we go. Um, the rankings in this game feel real weird. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, um, Middle almost beat Mizzou a couple weeks ago. Like, remember mm-hmm. that? Like, yeah, I do. Middle had a chance to beat Mizzou, and now Mizzou's nationally ranked. Um, and LSU, here we are in, in week six, and LSU's out of the college football playoff race already. Yep. Yep. Um, which, you know, last week I was saying I thought LSU, you know, passed the eyeball test as potentially being the best team in the SEC West. And I agree um, with you. Wrong, right? Like, we were both <laughs> wrong on that. Um, you know, again, come back and see how wrong we were. Um, uh-huh. We were definitely wrong about that. Um this is, you know, and that, and that game was ridiculous. Um, dropping that ridiculous game on the road at, at Ole Miss. This is a true strength on strength matchup. Mm-hmm. Um, LSU's offense against Mizzou's defense. Mizzou's defense is crazy good against the run. Yeah. Um, and we can't forget here that even though middle gave them a game, um, Mizzou has wins over both K-State and Memphis. Those are mm-hmm. nothing to scoff at, right? right? So this this Missouri team deserves to be ranked at this point. But all of that being said, I just have this gut feeling that LSU is going to come out with a chip on its shoulder after the last weekend. And Jalen Daniels is going to will his team to a win, even with what should be a tough day slogging on the ground. Because mm-hmm. like I said, that Mizzou run defense is legit. Um, it's going to come down to Jalen Daniels, but I just think that he just, he has that type of talent. We talked about this last week. Mm-hmm. Um, 
And I think last week he just got into a shootout and he couldn't get out of it. Um, this week, I think he has the ability um, to be able to kind of take over this game and will his team to a win. So I'm going to take the Purple Tigers over the Black and Gold Tigers in what should be as entertaining of a game as we might see all weekend. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. One of these teams is playing at home. One of these teams is undefeated. One of these teams plays excellent defense, especially against the run. None of those teams are LSU. They are all Missouri. Yeah. Mean, meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, and, and you got to, the, the, the stats back this up, but if, if you didn't really catch it uh, from the game a week ago, the ND disease, that would be no defense, has followed Brian Kelly from South Bend to Baton Rouge. I'm picking Missouri to win this game at home. Nice. Let's see how that goes. At 3.30 on <laughs> CBS, you can have your music back for uh, for another weekend if you... For another week. Uh, eh, whatever. Number 11, Alabama at Texas A&M University. Bama is favored by a measly two and a half points uh, and a 46 and a half point AJ Fun Index. Um, that's well, not huh. especially... That's not especially fun. Uh, Carla, what do you think? So Bama seems to have righted the ship, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know, okay, yeah, they had a really strong performance against Mississippi State last week with a balanced offensive attack. Um, good defensive performance, too. Um, but the Aggies are like, they're good on defense, too, and they can really force Bama to be one-dimensional here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Aggies are third in the SEC in rush defense. They're allowing less than 100 yards per game. Um, so this means that this game might come down to the poise and play of Jalen uh, Jalen Milrow, which <laughs> um, that's a lot mm -hmm. for a, a quarterback that, I mean, yes, he's been kind of confirmed and solidified as the starter after the way that he played against Ole Miss and, you know, and, and obviously the way he played last week. But um, but man, this is a quarterback that's still like teetering on the verge of confidence, mm -hmm. right? And if you put an entire game on his shoulders, as much as I feel good about Jalen Daniels potentially being able to control that game we just talked about, I don't feel good about Jalen Monroe having to control this game on the road at Kyle right. Field. Right. Um, offensively, Texas A&M putting up bigger numbers than Bama. Um, if the D if the Aggies defense can rattle Milrow, this is a game the Aggies win at home. Mm -hmm. As much as you rolled the dice on Missouri. I'm rolling the dice on Texas A&M in this one. I think I think the Aggies get this done at home in a close, low-scoring game. Okay, okay. I'm I, the, the thing that I, I'm I, I, the, the thing that I think that it, uh, about Milrow is that Nick Saban has decided he's not, not going to throw the ball for the rest of the season. Um, there will there will be a, uh, a half-hearted attempt at uh, at a at a passing game, but they're they're going to run the football. Um, and as, as we mentioned the, the previous game, that this is a, a strength on strength kind of thing. Uh, the trouble with that, with that strategy is that, uh, Texas a and giving up just 96 yards rushing per game. Um, yeah. the, the thing that's going to save Alabama here is that it has a typically Alabama defense. Um, and I think that's going to be enough to, uh, give us a close, ugly win for Alabama on the road. Um, at 7 p.m. on ESPN, we have Kentucky fresh off their shellacking of Florida uh, at number one, Georgia. And who knows what that means? Georgia's favored by 14 and a half points. The AJ Fun Index is, again, a not so fun 48 and a half. Um, man, Carl, I wish this game was in Lexington. You know? Yeah, yes, I have that in my notes. Yeah, <laughs> like this game would be a completely different. I, this game would be a completely different game if it was in Lexington. These are two teams that are entering in very different ways, right? The Cats, as you mentioned, and we've mentioned, you know, on top of show that they they emphatically trounced Florida last week. Mm -hmm. Georgia needed those late game heroics to put away Auburn. If we all remember correctly, again, this was the same Georgia team that forgot how to play football in the first half against South Carolina. So right. this is not the same dominant dogs team that we've seen the last couple of years, but to bring back our vocabulary is Georgia mortable. Hmm. I, I don't think so, at least for this week. And here's the reason why Kentucky's defense is number two in the sec against the run, which mm -hmm. has helped them particularly against Florida. We talked about that last week and being able to, to, to shut down the Florida run game. Yeah. Um, Georgia's all about Carson Beck and Brock Bowers in the passing game. Mm -hmm. Um, 
and the 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 cats secondary is probably its weakness on defense here and georgia's playing at home under the lights between the hedges i think that all adds up to a georgia win to me but i don't think it's going to be I, I i don't think it's going to be a blowout by any stretch i think this is going to be another one of those nail biter games particularly if you're a dogs fan mm-hmm. um that they find a way again to pull this out in the fourth quarter kentucky keeps us close and competitive but i think the fact that um, that Georgia relies too much on the arm of Carson Beck. I think that's going to be the, the the deal breaker for the Cats in this one. Georgia wins at home. I just had a, 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 a vision of Bill Murray shouting about dogs and cats living together. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. Uh, Kentucky's Kentucky's <laughs> a very, very good team. Um, and, and, you know, if, mm-hmm. you, if you saw that, if you saw it any a bit of the game last week, um, you are aware uh georgia i have no reason to think that georgia won't start slow because they have every every game this season so far um yeah and, and that's that's a dangerous thing with this uh with with a, a team as good as kentucky is although i i don't know that kentucky has the kind of like really quick strike uh offense that that uh could could take georgia by surprise um as I said, I wish this was in Lexington because I, I, I would yeah. I might have a whole different opinion about how this is going to go. I, I think in Athens, uh, there is I, Georgia's going to win. Um, it, it may not change the opinion you and I have of them, uh, in that we're not sure where they belong in the in the hierarchy hierarchy this, so far this season. Um, but they're going to win this game uh, at seven thirty on ABC number ten Notre Dame at. Number 25, Louisville. Notre Dame is favored by six and a half points. The uh, AJ Fun Index is a surprisingly low 54. Um, Carla, what do you think? So speaking of needing late game heroics, like we just talked about with Georgia, hello, Notre Dame. Yes. Um, <laughs> Duke took the Irish down to the wire last week, and now here's a nationally ranked card squad. Yay. Um, looking to get back into the conversation in the ACC. Um Gosh, how brutal is this stretch for Notre Dame, right? I need to go um, Ohio State, Duke, Louisville, and oh yeah, by the way, they get USC next week. Yes. Um, And, and when you looked at this at the beginning of the season, I don't think anybody would have predicted that Duke and Louisville would have would be the tests that they are turning out to be. But here we are. Um, I think the key to this one, though, is the Irish secondary. Um, Jack Plummer at louisville quarterback jack Plummer, no relation to jake Plummer. i went and looked that up because i was like same last name they've got to be related in some way no there's no relation between them okay um so jack Plummer is capable of making the big play with his arm Mm -hmm. but he's also capable of making some big time mistakes he's already thrown six picks so far this year Mm -hmm. um and notre dame boasts the fourth best pass defense in the nation Mm -hmm. um so it's because of that I'm going to take the Irish in this one, and then we'll get to talk about them again next week because they have yet another blockbuster ahead of them. So um, the Irish win this one, um, much to the chagrin of the Louisville fans um, playing this game at what used to be Papa John Stadium. Um, but I, I, I think I think the Irish win this game fairly comfortably, just because I, Louisville's good they haven't played a ton of competition there. Yeah. So I, you know, they're, they're nationally ranked. They're undefeated um, kind of in a similar vein is like what you were mentioning about Maryland, how Maryland mm-hmm. should be nationally ranked. Like that's kind of what Louisville ha- what happened to them. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, the Irish win this game and then we get a heck of a blockbuster next week. Okay. Okay. Uh, given the video game offense run by Jeff Brom, I, I would have to think the odds makers are looking at Notre Dame's defense. Uh, as you said, very, very good as the reason for the oddly low AJ fun index. Uh, and that makes sense. Um, the Irish defense gets stops. Uh, it, it is uh, it is very good against the pass. Um, and if Notre Dame wants to, it can just ground and pound, control the ball, uh, and, uh, and and come away with a workmanlike win um, when they leave Louisville Saturday night. Notre Dame's going to win this one. Um, our AJ special. Uh, in spite of the AJ Fun Index, um, I, I, I he, yeah. he already he already told me to get ready to watch this game. As I mentioned before, 8 p.m. on Fox, number 24, Fresno State at Wyoming. Fresno is favored by six. Uh, the AJ Fun Index is a surprisingly low 45.4. Although we're, we're we're not because he's he's excited about this game, we're not going to call this one the anti AJ game of the week. Uh, what do you think, Carla? 
So technically, this is not an after dark game. This is still a primetime game, right? right? With a kick with an eight o'clock Eastern kick. So no excuse, everybody pay attention to this game. It's only starting a half hour later than when a lot of the the primetime games will start. Mm -hmm. Um, Back to the game at hand. Uh, Ask Texas Tech about how nationally televised trips to Laramie go. Um, (laughs) This this Wyoming team is having itself a season. Mm -hmm. Um, The challenge is, as AJ mentioned last week, Fresno is legit good this year. Yes. Um, Mike, Mikey Keen has been a more than ample replacement for Jake Hayner. Um, and the Bulldogs are playing defense, especially against the run. And I think that's the key here because the ground game is Wyoming's mojo offensively. Yes. Um, and so because of that, I think that adds up to a Fresno win here. But this game's on national TV in the primetime window should absolutely be on your be on your radar. Listen to AJ. Watch this game. Even with that low fun index, this is going to be a good game. Um, but I think the Bulldogs get the win on the road in Laramie. Okay. Okay. Um, I will reiterate. Watch this game. These are two of the best. A uh, group of five teams in all the land. Fresno has two wins over Power Five schools, and he is five and zero. Oh. Wyoming is four and one. They have a Power Five win and uh, a loss of Texas, where they made the Longhorns uh, uncomfortable for a while. Um, the atmosphere yeah. until the is, fourth quarter. Until the fourth quarter, uh, the atmosphere is going to be impressive. Yeah. The Cowboys are going to rely on their ground game to keep Fresno's offense off the field, and Wyoming will win this at home. Boys and girls, you can hear the Carly show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google uh, for a while anyway, and a variety of other podcasting hosts. You can watch (laughs) us on YouTube and the show's Facebook page. For the first time this season, you can read us on our Substack. If you like us, please subscribe, rate, review. If you don't, mind your own damn business. Uh, Be sure to come back next week to see exactly how wrong we were. Carla, any final thoughts? And we will be wrong because I just want to point out, this is probably as we've been going through this, because we don't talk to each other about our picks before no. we, we record the show. We do not. This is the first time that I can remember in a long time that we are on opposing picks in are they a, all a lot of these games. We're almost Most opposing of them. in all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I think that goes to show how wide open this season really is. Uh, it does. Um, yes. You know, and then what we talked about top of the show, I think is absolutely true. To, to raise that point even a little bit further, let me give you a couple of top 25 teams that absolutely need to be on alert this weekend. Okay. Um, because they could go down. Number 13, Wazoo at UCLA mm-hmm. with a weird three Eastern kick um, on the Pac-12 network, which means that AJ is the only one that will be able to watch this. <laughs> um, the Bruins are favored by three and a half at home. Okay over a nationally ranked Wazoo team, the hmm. UCLA defense is solid. Is this when the Pac-12 starts eating its young? This might be the first game that starts yeah, those dominoes falling. The Bruins can win this game at home. Um, another game to keep an eye on in that same window, Syracuse at number 14, North Carolina, at 3.30 Eastern on ESPN. These two teams are mirror images of each other on offense. Mm-hmm. Defensively, the Qs have the third best scoring defense and total defense in the ACC. Carolina can absolutely not overlook this game. They can lose this game at home. I think the Tar Heels eke it out, but these are two top 25 teams that, who facing real tests from unranked opponents, in addition to everything we just talked about that could completely shuffle the rankings. Um, Next week we're going to be like that, like the like in the anchor man in anchor man when they like throw the script up in the air. Like mm-hmm. I think that's where we're going to be next week is with all of our rankings. We're just going to go. Like, <laughs> um, we could be. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm real glad this is a bye week for Penn State because the mm-hmm. schedule is so like eek. Um, I'm real glad we're not playing this week. Um, final note after you all have listened to this, um, don't forget. Uh, Q section is underway. Um, and so we have midweek football happening this week. Um, I actually, we were recording this on Tuesday, tomorrow night on Wednesday, my middle blue Raiders, um, host, um, a surprisingly four and one Jacksonville state team, okay. um, in the comfy confines of Floyd stadium. Um, I think middle finds a way to win this game. Um, but that game should be entertaining. There is midweek football on now pay attention. You've got Yay. games on Wednesday night, Thursday night and Friday night. For the next several weeks, have at it. Enjoy that college football. Um, or you alternatively, you could you could uh, go to ESPN Plus at three thirty on Saturday and watch one of the best defenses in the country, uh, my Ohio University Bobcats uh, are hosting Kent. Um, I, I I'm still it, it's 
I don't know if we need to hi Charlie if we need to uh, do a whole lot to to fix OU's offense it's not really broken it's not as prolific as it was a year ago as I mentioned but the defense I don't know where this came from I have no idea what's <laughs> happening but OU's defense they're giving up 238 yards per game 171 in the air 66 yards per game on the ground what is this yeah. team I had I, I don't know where it came from but I am enjoying the heck out of it um and uh I, I look for uh the the uh, the Bobcats to win big over Kent uh which is uh one in four on the season so far Carla um yes I see you and I will you and I will see which one of us is right and which one of us is wrong <laughs> maybe I don't I don't know um but uh, yes. it's, it's, it is fun that we pick so many games differently, um, and it's, it, it, yeah. it is a reflection of uh, how much fun this weekend is going to be. Um, thank you once again uh, for everything that you do. We, uh, we appreciate that. And boys and girls, yeah. thank you guys for watching, for listening, for reading, uh, for doing all of the things. Um, enjoy this week's games, and be sure to come back next week because we're going to do it again. I promise you. Cheers, everybody. We'll see you again soon. Cheers. Thank you.